Here at Phillips Broadband, our test engineering department is responsible for developing test methods, equipment, and software to support our manufacturing operations. Around seven years ago, we began introducing several new product lines, including extended bandwidth amplifiers and fiber optic transport systems. In test engineering, we realized that the test equipment and methods we were using at the time simply weren't accurate enough to test those new products and couldn't adequately support the projected increases in production volumes. To guarantee performance for our external customers, we began looking for technologies and techniques that would provide the most accurate testing possible. To support our internal customers, we look for ways to improve efficiencies to help create a competitive manufacturing process. Throughout this video, members from our department will be showing you how our search for solutions to those problems led to new equipment and new methods that have revolutionized the role of test engineering here at Philips. The Hewlett Packard 8753 Vector Network Analyzer can measure all of our RF parameters with the best accuracy in the world. To accurately test our products using the Network Analyzer, we need a method of removing the effects of our fixtures, cables, and switches from our measurements. This requires a precision standards kit for every product interface, whether it's a pin and socket, RF connector, or fiber optic transmitter. One of the factors that guarantees the highest quality products to our customers is the research we've devoted to developing accurate, repeatable calibration standards for our production tests. Full two-port error correction involves measuring each of four standards. While measuring these standards, we have implemented error trapping to ensure the proper standard is being measured. If the wrong standard is detected, we prompt the tester to connect the proper standard and then remeasure. To further assure the quality of our measurements, we periodically check the error correction by measuring a stable mismatch. In-circuit test was implemented to improve the efficiencies of the network amps assembly line by quickly identifying board faults early in the assembly process. For boards with adequate node access, the tester uses a bed of nails fixture to accurately identify missing parts, wrong value parts, electrical shorts and opens on printed circuit board assemblies. The operator enters the board's serial number to begin testing. Test times range from 15 seconds to one minute, depending on the complexity of the board. The in-circuit test generates a failures report using serialized data stored from the tests. This report indicates the most common failures and is used to correct components and processes which contribute to lower yields. In-circuit tests help to improve the network amp's first test yield from 72% to over 90%. That's 480 additional units per week passing the first time. The HP 3173 in-circuit testers used at Philips Broadband represent the current state-of-the-art in in-circuit test technology. We will be implementing this technology in the fiber optic and BCG production areas in 1997. The new equipment you just saw is very complex, requiring special training and skills to operate it properly. There are hundreds of settings required to prepare that equipment for use. We realized that the only practical way to assure accurate, repeatable configurations was to automate the setups. That is, connect a computer and run software to configure and control the equipment during test. Test automation opened the door for engineered techniques that simply weren't possible with manual test methods. The level and quality of our test automation are the best in the industry and provide fail-safe guarantees of product performance for our customers. One advantage to station automation is rapidly changing from one product to another. With minimal setup time, the fiber multi-product station will test many variations of optical transmitters and optical receivers. This fiber station is capable of testing over 100 models from 15 different product lines. For any given product, we may use as many as 10 different pieces of measurement equipment. The test station software automatically sets up test parameters such as start and stop frequencies, power ranges, supply voltages, and loads the calibration for the equipment. This level of automation greatly reduces setup time and ensures accurate configuration. Station size is an issue which test engineering has dealt with by using the network analyzer keypad as the user interface. This reduces benchtop equipment by removing the computer keyboard and allows the operator to concentrate on the network analyzer. One of our goals is to continuously improve our test processes, making them more accurate and faster. As an example, this is how we used to test the return trunk line. The tester connected three cables and a power plug. 
They also needed to hold on to the unit while tuning it. And move the cables for various measurements. This took excessive time and was prone to error. With the new test fixture, the only connection the tester needs to complete is installing the unit into the fixture. An automated switching control unit allows for all connections to be made accurately and allowing for better access to the unit. With automation, our rate has increased from 10 per hour to 26 per hour, a 160% improvement in test throughput. Test automation has also helped us to eliminate many written test procedures by incorporating them directly into the test software. There used to be over 15 written procedures to cover the more than 30 models. That was more than 130 pages of written instructions. The test associates spent time locating test procedures and flipping pages during the test. With automated instructions, procedures are now contained in the test software and are automatically displayed on the network analyzer at the appropriate time. Test automation saves considerable time and guarantees test accuracy by ensuring that we are using the correct tuning instructions for the model under test. Originally, on the line extender and similar product lines, to get real-life performance measurements, each unit had to be measured in an actual housing. This led to repeatability and measurement control problems, not to mention how cumbersome the testing could become. Using the latest in vector network analyzer technology, coupled with fixture embedding techniques and cable simulation algorithms, we have realized enhanced accuracy and increased test yields across the board. The company that can quickly and easily store, retrieve, and analyze its test data will be in the best position to compete in the global marketplace. We at Philips now have the ability to store all of our test data to a central location where it is automatically compiled for analysis. The data can then be accessed from any networked PC in the facility. From there, the data can be plotted and eventually made available to our customers. The benefits of networking facilitate product tracking through its flow by virtue of a unique barcode. Before shipment, a product history can be verified to ensure it is passed through all the required quality gates. Automated test systems like these are common throughout the production facility. Because they must perform many functions, the software that runs them has become very complex. In fact, these programs can take hundreds of hours to create and contain thousands of lines of code which, as a whole, must perform accurately and predictably at all times. To reduce the possibility of errors when writing programs of this size, all test software must undergo validation before it is released to production. The validation process requires that all software be independently verified by a second test engineering associate. During validation, we first confirm the accuracy of the test specifications embedded within the software. The software is then installed on a production test system where all aspects of its operation are checked using actual products. Only after these steps are completed can new software be placed into production use. We then solicit feedback from the operators which enables us to improve the software in future revisions. This process is one of many that helps us to provide the most trouble-free and accurate test systems possible to our customers. As a leader in developing test methods, Test Engineering's role is expanding to include new services for internal and external customers. Here are some of the new ways our group is working to make things better. One of the quality barriers identified at last year's Customer Day was the amount of time spent working on problems with released product. To overcome that barrier, Test Engineering worked with other groups to establish target performance margins and test times for new releases. Those margins help to ensure passing units in spite of variations in component and manufacturing processes. Our target performances are outlined in an EBR objective document. We use our automated test stations and data collection methods to capture test data on all network amplifier EBR units. This test data is then compared to the EBR objectives to determine if the product meets our goals and can therefore be released to production. In the network amplifier area, up to 15% of our time was spent working on release products with marginal performance. Since our EBR objectives were implemented, that time has been cut by more than half and continues to drop. Production yields are up and test times are down. EBR objectives are one way we've worked together to improve customer satisfaction. 
The Test Engineering Support Group operates within the Test Engineering Department, providing plant-wide services such as equipment calibration and tracking, technical training, and direct support to production tests. Calibration compares measurement equipment against devices that are traceable to international standards, assuring that our measurements are accurate anywhere in the world. Calibration control is a key factor in our ISO 9001 certification because it assures that our customers receive products that meet published specifications. Our calibration database helps to assure compliance with ISO requirements. We track location, calibration status, and history for over 6,800 items plant-wide. We also keep hard copy records for every piece of calibrated equipment at PBNI. Because of the importance of calibration control, we are guaranteed a visit from our ISO auditors every time they tour our plant. TES has always been involved in direct technical training for our test associates. Recently, we've expanded our programs to include structured, hands-on electronics training using PC-driven packages such as the LabVolt series shown here. Using these tools, individuals can proceed at their own pace. Their progress and test scores are automatically tracked by the system. This year, we'll expand the programs to include more associates and advanced topics related to the work we do here at Phillips. Internal customer satisfaction has been a driving force in our group's work as evidenced by our technicians' presence directly in the production areas. To continuously improve the quality of our service, we've developed several customer survey forms to solicit feedback from our internal customers. We take the information, evaluate it, and modify our work standards to make improvements. All of our surveys receive objective scores that are posted, monitored, and evaluated as a department metric. Test Engineering provides outstanding customer support and achieves the highest product quality through innovative and accurate test processes. As problem seekers and solvers, entrepreneurs and teammates, teachers and students, we continually strive for technical excellence.
better settle down. <laughs> you are out of hand. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right, now, now, now. I know what you guys were getting at. Where's Mark Fair?
is explain to you what the judges are going to be looking for. Each judge, there are six of them. Maybe let's introduce the judges. So should we introduce them? We'll introduce the judges. Judge number one, if you will please stand up as I introduce you so we can all pay you homage. Judge number one is Zed Addison. Feel better. 